sit with this guy. This this, this guy that directed this Zack Snyder. Thinks he's a badass or something. He's not. <laughs> this is uh, Cal Cat at the Cal Cat store. And this is my review filled with spoilers of <laughs> Batman and Superman uh, versus Superman. Uh, the the sequel to Man of Steel has come out, and I was there was going to be a long tirade, but I don't think there needs to be because a lot of the reviews have kind of gone there already. Uh, yeah, the the key points of the trouble with the film are, are fairly obvious. Zack Snyder was a poor choice to do any kind of DC superhero movie, even if he did Sucker Punch in 300. Sucker Punch wasn't very good. They apparently, some studio thought it was. Uh, 300 was apparently trauma-inducing for certain people. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the, yeah, it's just... Um, uh, it's it's not as bad as the critics said it was. Rotten Tomatoes currently is at a score of 29 uh, or 30 or somewhere around there. Uh, I saw it. In, I saw it in a uh, packed house on a Friday on opening night, and I'm giving you a spoiler review because why not? Really, if you've seen the trailer, you've kind of seen the movie anyway. Uh, the the the. There is no real shocking reveals in this film. It plays like if you've seen Superman Returns, not Superman Returns, but not Batman Returns. The Batman Returns, Dark Knight Returns. It's called Dark. It is from uh, back in the eighties and eighty nine. There was a famous comic book by Frank Miller, who is a known, uh, very similar character to Schneider. Very. Uh, uh, tends to be misogynistic, and tends to be very opinionated, it tends to be a little bit prejudiced of other people, uh, Frank Miller, and he was a comic book writer, in the, very successful for Watchmen and reinventing Batman and stuff like that back in the day, uh, doing, uh, I think it was another Miller that messed with the spirit, I don't know if it was him, but it was, uh, but the movie version was him, and, um, and, yeah, Miller is a known comic book icon. He's very odd. He, if you see him in interviews, he's... This movie pays homage to his story. Uh, there's a much better version called uh, The Batman Returns 2 Cartoon that was out at the same time as Dark Knight Rises. And then this cartoon, it follows the comic book. And it has the girl Robin and all that. There's no girl Robin in this one. They left her out. Uh, but the, the, the similarity is that Superman and Batman will fight each other. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and the spoilers should begin shortly, but I will tell you, so you can skip them. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, um, or maybe not. Uh, the, the movie... Yeah, uh, the, the, how, the movie that we saw it in had trouble with the sound... And it had trouble with the, the the picture. It actually was 15 minutes into it and started over. Something was wrong with it. But even so, the kinetic, hyperactive, lens flare, abrams -y sort of action, you kind of didn't notice that whether it was actually part of the movie or part of the DVD getting, that was in the player, the movie getting all gonked, and they, we all got a rain check. But yeah, um... But yeah, apart from that, you know, if you watched it linearly all the way through, it's, uh, so we'll excuse that because it was a projection problem in a major theater in, in town, uh, the big, the big screen, 10, 20 screen theater. Um, uh, the, the, uh, one of the biggest objections to the, the new Snyder version of this, and Kevin Smith touched on it in his review of Man of Steel a long time ago. And decades ago, when he went over a decade ago, when he went over why why the guy that did Wild West doing it was a bad idea. Uh, same idea. Why make Superman a brooding, dark, tormented figure? When you do that, you make Superman already Batman. So there's no point in them fighting each other. They're too much alike. 
and yeah, you kind of defeat that. Now, in the Miller comic book, to be fair, the famous Miller comic book, uh, he kept Superman the Boy Scout. He, he didn't make Superman evil. Superman didn't want to fight Batman. He wasn't dark and tormented. Uh, yeah, so, except for his planet blowing up. They do push the same buttons as the Miller one. The, uh, the you know, uh, there's a few minor spoilers there. Uh, but the problem is that this movie, even though it was a packed house, and there were children in it, and young children watching it and their parents, and there were various other distractions, the movie is distracting itself just the way it's filmed. I think Christopher Nolan would have better did a better job directing this movie than letting than letting Zack Schneider direct this movie. Um, but still, it would have been overlong, I think. Uh, and and yeah, there's just it's not a thirty percent. I wouldn't I wouldn't give it that. I mean, it's not worse than GI Joe Two. Come on, or GI Joe. GI Joe Two was at least kind of fun. It was like a forty percent, I'd say. But they said thirty seven. The original was 32%. It's not that bad. Um, it's not It's not as bad as Green Lantern, which was like, I consider 10%. Uh, but, um, and as was uh, speculated during after the picture, uh, DC is trying desperately to do Marvel, and they're just better at doing shows. They really are. Smallville, although it was cheesy and it had problems, it was a better show than, than the other, other ones. Uh, the Clark and Lewis, Lewis and Clark thing, uh, the, uh, was better. Not great, but better. Uh, they didn't do a Wonder Woman remake very well, but everybody remembers the original. Um, yeah, Justice League cartoons are, are, are fun. Uh, the, the newer one is darker and more tormented, and that's the one they based the Wonder Woman character on, the new, new JLA, uh, stuff. Um, Justice League Unlimited. Uh, some people even said, are they going to make a Justice League? Yes, they're making a Justice League movie. Uh, definitely. Um, there's a, uh, spoilers, there's a cameo by Aquaman in it. And he looks, looks interesting. Um, he's not blonde. He just looks interesting. I'm not even sure why there's a cameo. And then they got a cameo by what I presume is Cyborg. There's a guy that pops out. Cybernetic robot gets built and stuff. I'm not sure why that's there. And then we have Lex Luthor's son, played by, I think, Jesse Eisenberg. It might be Michael Sarah. I always get those two guys mixed up. He did a very good job playing Lex Luthor, uh, his son. A very crazy, very manic sort of kind of guy. Uh, playing him really nuts. I'm not sure. That, there were a lot of other nice cameos in it. Some uh, some nice uh, acting. But apart from that, the the whole... All the confrontations are... Typical Snyder, like, ooh, look at my rippling, muscly, evil bad guy. Ah, watch him punch somebody hard. Ah, Which in modern movies is what they like to do. Even the ending of Avengers 2 had 50 minutes of just a fight in the city. Very similar to the end of Man of Steel. It didn't need that, but it had. Um, yeah, so, so I don't necessarily fault Zack Snyder for doing that. But I don't necessarily praise him either, because he didn't need to do all that. If you're going to have an action scene, CGI characters with giant rippling muscles punching each other, you don't know who's fighting who after like 10 minutes. So you might as well just not do that. But that's his style, he likes that. But were the, the characters believable? I thought, um, let's see, I thought, and there are spoilers, I thought Ben Affleck did all right as Batman. I think he did a better job doing the voice because you could kind of understand what he was saying. Uh, voice. Uh, see, I can do the voice because I played Decepticons in my Transformers parodies. I can do the Decepticon voice <laughs> really well. So yes, yes, you know, or the Autobot voice. The point is, Batman is supposed to be a good guy. He's a vigilante. But he doesn't kill. He's not supposed to kill. In this movie, he kills a bunch of bad guys. First, it's a dream, which was kind of stupid. Or I guess it was... Some, yeah, it was supposed to be a dream. It's kind of unclear. And then later on, he's killing people. It's like, no, Batman does not kill. Batman will knock the guy out or punch him or, or uh, throw him uh, 
you know, or something, but he won't kill anybody. He arrests them. And, uh, <laughs> Batman, the Batman shouldn't kill, not even in the Miller version. So, the Batman shouldn't kill. Um, I'd even Tim, Tim, and Tim, can't really be like, no, no, I'm back here. Batman's not supposed to kill people. Ooh. But yes, um, so, so yeah, he wasn't there, but I'm sure if he watches this, he will be like, oh, yeah, they didn't do that. Superman and Captain America are similar. They're supposed to be the all-American Boy Scout kind of guy that's, you know, it's, uh, Superman's an alien, but Krypton. They finally put the, uh, the the kryptonite in the movie, and I think that actually detracts from it a little bit in the overall thing. I think it would have been better had they. Now Snyder's problem is that he does not know when to stop the movie. The movie went on for almost three hours. The movie needed to stop right when they defeated the. They shouldn't even have gone into the Doomsday Dark Seed stuff that they go into later. Like, I don't even know, what, other than, ooh, let's just keep it going and have an even bigger colossal giant thing. It's like, no, that's another movie. That's part three. Well, why do that in part two like Spider-Man 3 did? No, no, don't put that in this movie. Put that in the next one. No, no, he wanted to put that in there too. So there's a, there's a I won't tell you how it happened. But, yeah, Doomsday's in it. And he looks really strange, but, um, yeah, and it's like, okay, um, that was unexpected. <laughs> and it's like, uh, yeah, but it wasn't like a twist ending, like, oh my god, that's cool. It was more like a twist ending, like, oh my, I, what? Um, yeah, it wasn't an oh my god, that's cool moment. Not not for anybody else, they're like, okay, who's this guy? This, this kind of melty dude? Who's this guy? Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I was just like, uh... And then, and then one of them literally turned to the camera and said, It is your doomsday... Su I think it was Lex. It's your doomsday Superman. And I was like, oh... Uh, collective moan from the audience. It wasn't just me. I was like, oh, is that doomsday? That, that, is, that don't look like doomsday. That looks like some sort of weird... Like... Like... 300 monster crossed with the, uh, the Thanos from Marvel. The chin and everything is like, okay, okay. Joe, uh, Snyder should just make a movie where he literally films for two hours the awesome rippling sweaty muscles. Uh, that would be 300 too. Or the awesome sweaty muscle just randomly on a beach somewhere. You just walk through a beach and make a 90 minute movie. Of just men flexing their powerful pectorials. And then feeling pain. He should just do that. He should just make like a like a a video with action men running around in it. Actually he'd be probably a good choice for a G.I. Joe movie. But uh, <laughs> him and Michael Bay. But yeah, um, there's some interesting screw ups in this movie. It's just, it's just that, yeah, it, it was, uh, yeah, they just kept throwing other things in, the, even to the point of the space. Ba the battle was so weird that literally, literally, as a joke, they they must have thrown it at the last minute because they realized they had to have some jokes. Batman lifts up a kitchen sink and throws it on him. Literally, he does. He throws a kitchen sink. Like, wow, on Superman. It's like, okay. And the audience is like, what? There was a lot of what in there. It's like, this is part of the glitching? No, that's the movie. Um, yeah, so. Literally, a sink. And, yeah, I can see why Kevin Smith didn't like it. It wasn't that he was jealous of Affleck or anything. Probably was a little bit. It's just that it wasn't a very good story. They should have let Kevin Smith write it. I think he probably would have come out a little better. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the story was a little convoluted. And throwing in Wonder Woman is sort of a Selena Kyle sort of slash Catwoman, but not really, like, person was, like, weird. And then having her show up at the end, which is in the trailer. 
and help them was like, huh? Did they, they? It's like the last half of this movie needed to be in the next one. Totally okay if it was in the next one. It's cool. And of course, if you're going to have Doomsday, you're going to do the death of Superman. And that's a big spoiler at the very end. And it's like, like, that's not really, and it's, and the way they get there is just like, what the, he okay, yeah. And people were like enjoying it at first, but within five minutes, while the credit was, credits were rolling, people were like, okay, well, what the hell just happened right here? And, and, and that was that supposed to happen there? And, and did this happen here? And what's Lex doing over there in the prison? And how did the lights go off? And, 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 and at least one or two people, either girlfriends or boyfriends or relatives of other people that were in the audience, were like, oh, thank goodness, I didn't get that scene either. <laughs> there was like a bunch of those. I was like, yeah, I was like, I didn't get it either. So what? You didn't get it either? Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Like, yeah, and that wasn't glitching. But, but yeah, it's like, wow, they're, they're just the... This movie was a blender. It was a clusterfuck. It was like... Let's throw a bunch of Superman stuff from comic books in the 90s and make them look cool. They totally work. No. Um, you either do Batman vs. Superman, which is fine, or you do, you do Doomsday and then Death of Superman. You do not do all three together in the same movie. That does not make any sense. At all. You don't do that. That's, yeah, you just don't. Um, you're trying to shoehorn too many things in there, and I'm sure some of it was the studio saying, "Oh, we got to make this more like Marvel, so we got to throw in some of our best characters and chuck them in there." Yeah, but it doesn't work because we didn't need to see a cameo by Aquaman going coming out of the water. We didn't need to see the beginning of Cyborg because that didn't make sense. It looked cool, but that was it. I think the half of the movie is like, "Oh, this scene looks cool. Let's put that in." It's like, no, oh, the alien ship being used by Lex Luthor. It's like, how? Why wouldn't the ship have safety protocols that say you can't go in? And didn't the at wasn't the atmosphere alien to the humans in the first movie? Did they pump all the atmosphere out? Because it was alien to them. They would have died. They forgot about that. But it's like, the, and they can't blame Superman for the world engine thing because that was his dog that did it. And Zod is somehow connected to Doomsday. I won't give it all away. Just some, most of it. Um, yeah, so it's like... And Batman doesn't kill him. It's someone else. I won't give that away either. But it's like... It's like... It doesn't matter. Because by the time you get there, you're like... Okay, giant dude that looks like he's all slimy and clay and big muscly dude. Giant dude is fighting. Yay. We're fighting the giant dude. Yay. Fire's going everywhere. Yay. Even little kids were bored. They were like walking around. It's like, yeah, yeah, this, this is, this is just what the hell. Yeah, and and as they thought about it more and more, they're like, yeah, this is, this just wasn't very good. <laughs> um, but, but but yeah, yeah, the audiences were were thoroughly liking the the idea, and um, yeah, so I just didn't think it was a Superman movie. It would have been great if it was like. If they'd said, okay, this is the origin of Darkseed. And Darkseed's going to fight negative Batman. And that's the movie. Then it would work. If this was like the negative universe and it was like, it wasn't really them, it was really... That'd be kind of neat. But no, they were supposed to be Batman and Superman. And that's not how that works. Even the Miller version was like, well, yeah, cool, but it would realistically never happen. I mean... Yeah, he uses the kryptonite to weaken him so he can fight him, but that's a cop-out. It was like, at least in the comic book, it was different. He didn't have the kryptonite so much as he had just, um... Uh, Superman was kind of letting him win so he could teach him a lesson or something. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, because he would have knocked him into orbit. And there was a nuke scene where they sort of ripped off Avengers 1. Was funny that they implied that they blew him up at one point, but it was not related to the other scene, incidentally. They blew him up twice, actually, and it's like, or they do something horrible to him twice, Superman. And it's like, like it begins to not be a surprise if you just 
go, okay, ooh, something bad happened here. And, and this is a, yet another movie where two random people are in the nuke room and they turn a key. That's not how that works. Only in Hollywood would they do that. We're going to launch a nuclear missile into orbit to defeat the bad guy. It's like, they would never do that. The, the, it's a computer room. There's not like two guys with a literal key going. <laughs> no, no, that's stupid. That's only in Hollywood. They would never do that. It's like, <laughs> you know, then two bad guys could get in there and go chink and launch missiles. Yeah, which would be stupid. Yeah, there's a little bit of Superman: The Quest for Peace in this movie, which is weird. I don't know why they, they they were just trying to throw everything in there and then literally hitch and say, "There should have been more humor in it." Batman should not have killed anybody. Superman should really not have killed anybody. Um, they could beat the bad guys up real good, but not kill them. They shouldn't have been so dark and tormented either. I mean, they, they, why does it have to be dark and tormented? Why not? Why not have it be more like Avengers, where it's fun, where you have like, you know, like Loki show up and he's so blatantly evil, and yeah, he deserves to be knocked into orbit and half killed, but he's not going to be. Or or Thor with his brazen behavior, you know, he's. Marvel knows how to do this stuff. They're like Marvel, Disney. You have to make it fun. You have to make your movie so you've got like your Captain America. Even Civil War looks more fun than this. It's like, okay, yeah, the idea is, okay, they're, they're, they're vigilantes and they're going to fight. And it's a similar idea. But, but they're more fun about it. It's like they don't necessarily want to beat each other up. It's just it's gotten to this point where they have to. So they're, they start beating each other up. I'm going to knock you in your perfect teeth, ha ha. You know, it's like, <laughs> well, he didn't go ha ha, but he should have. But it was almost that kind of idea that, that like, like, they're, 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 you know, the, the superhero genre movie. You have to stay with the established canon. I'm not saying go full bore crazy with, like, like, on one end and say, like, oh, we have to do our movie with Superman being, like, Christopher Reeve necessarily, because then, then it's too odd and goofy, and Superman Lois Lane was odd in this movie too, but I'll, I'll forgive him that, just because if this is a sequel to, if this is sort of a reboot sequel, and, and um, Man of Steel is a reboot sequel, and this is the reboot sequel's sequel, <laughs> then we're going to ignore Superman Returns and pretend it didn't happen, because, yeah, because you should, um, <laughs> although they do kind of reference it in there. But yeah, um, wow, uh, Superman versus Batman versus Superman versus whatever, um, is not very good. I would give it, I would say it's, I would actually be a little nicer to it than the critics were, having, liking, liking some kind of angst movies on occasion, and I would say it, it's probably two and a half stars. I would say about 50%. I would say there's, if this movie had been literally, if, if I was going to edit this movie for Editing Bay or something, or something like, like the Lord of the Rings movies were, were, were a little better than... Uh, yeah, they were better than this one. But but yeah, like those movies, uh, overlong tracks of stuff that didn't need to be there would be gone. I would just say, okay, we don't need all of that other exposition because it doesn't matter what's going on with these other bad guys over here doing this thing. and kidnap the person and they have to rescue them and blah, blah, blah. Then there's this whole backstory with finding the computer chip. That doesn't even need to be in there because it doesn't go anywhere. Um, the, the other thing, it's like, like there's all of this other stuff that didn't need to be there and they could have just got to the battle. Show the battle. Don't show Doomsday. Don't show what happens with Doomsday and that other stuff because it doesn't make sense. Just have it end with them rescuing. Or, and Yeah, but I suppose if they're going to show Doomsday... Then cut out all of the first hour. And just go right to the battle and then doomsday. Okay, if you want, really have that. But it doesn't really work too well. Um, it still wouldn't, really, because it's such parts of it are spectacularly bad. In about half of it, spectacularly bad. So, uh, so yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So there you go. There's my review of Superman, Batman versus Superman, Superman versus Batman. Uh, spoilers all over the place, because, yeah, I kinda, oh, I'm just going to give you spoilers. Um, trying to do two or three different classic 90s Batman comics and Superman ones, 
and not quite doing it right because those stories were too big of an idea for this movie and to put them all together it's too much for everyone to follow. I realize in this hyperkinetic um, millennial society everything has to be hyper. They have to do like five different things all at once. They don't really have to. They just do. I think you can tell a story without having it go all over the place. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm not for the slow talky things. I'm not like that either. Just saying that like they, they've done it better with with superhero movies. Treating it as a superhero fantasy movie, it is. I'm not saying that that oh he only likes the funky movies. If you see my other reviews, you know I'm totally a fantasy sci-fi nerd guy. I totally totally love superhero movies. I'm going to see them mainly Marvel, obviously. Um, but, <laughs> but I like the DC cartoons back in the day. And, and I have the Batman collection from the 60s and all that. Oh, yeah, I like, I like all that stuff. And I like the Dark Knight trilogy and all that. Yeah, it's a Batman. I like all that stuff. But it's like, no, he doesn't... Yeah. So I totally either, to, into either and geek out on Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. And Transformers and Robotech and all the classic stuff, so... Well, it's totally, my channels are all about action adventure. I'm always plugging action adventure. Action adventure movies should get an Oscar, darn it. Ah. You know, but yes, um, <laughs> go to con comic conventions and uh, interview. Yeah, so it's totally, we're, we're all about the, the action. But, but this movie is Zack Snyder having, a, it's a Zack Snyder fanfic about Superman and Batman. And it needed to be a Zack Snyder movie about Instead, and and blatantly hitting it home that oh Superman's like a god savior thing and saying it over and over again, and doesn't help. Um, that's just silly. Uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. There's one where they sort of implied that and they did it right. Just had a salvation sort of thing at the end, and that was fine. You didn't need to hit them over the head with it. That you've been converted or whatever. You become. If you start doing that in your movies, then it's like, uh, then it becomes like the end of Matrix 3, and Neo becomes Space Jesus. Yeah, if there's, yeah. I'm surprised that they didn't do that at the end of this movie, actually. Yeah, why didn't they do, like, a, a silly resurrection scene and have him, have everyone come back from, from the dead? Just, you know, just to do it, because they could have, because it's Zack Snyder. Um, yeah, and then they can have a sucker punch scene where somebody imagines they're in a ethereal realm while getting abused. Zack Snyder, that was, yeah, that was not, um, being a feminist. That was being a misogynist. It's different. Um, anyway, so this movie, um, when I was, as was pointed out to me in the movie, but I already knew, which was funny, there was a scene in which Superman was going to jump into the bathtub with Lois Lane. It didn't make any sense. It was completely nuts. The next the guy next to me, I was, like, okay, that wouldn't work, because he would crush her. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, I've seen clerks. They already described that. <laughs> Ew. So, yeah, he would totally kill Lois Lane if he had, if he had sex with her. He would destroy her. <laughs> Ew, unless he were a kryptonite cunt. And that would kill him. Which is from Kevin Smith movie. But... Ding, <laughs> ding, Superman versus Batman. Mm. And he doesn't have sex with her. He just pretends he's going to. It's like, okay. Or he jumps into the hot tub and spills it. Which, if he was being Superman at that point, would have caused the tub to break through the apartment building, fall down, go through the floor, and they would have been in the next room underneath him. <laughs> and not only that, his... his the force of his pelvis would have not only crushed her, it would have blown her through the floor. She would have been stuck, like, ripped in half, which would have been gory. And, oh no, I've killed her. Oh. Now that would be misogynistic. No. Um, so, yeah, there was this weird scene in a tub. But, uh, so yeah, they pretty much, they pretty much say, okay, he's gotta be Clark Kent. Which is silly. Well, yeah, she totally would know that he was super. The glasses aren't going to make it look different. Like, Okay, 
I mean, you know, secretly I am Super Cat. The Cat of Steel. It's true. <laughs> Defender of Weevil. Super Cat. There. And now I shall fly. Bong bong blah 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 blah.